smiles have to witness. Always. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it was the uh, first time that we played them in my career here, I think. And, um, but definitely not uh, my first time coaching against Karen Aston, who I think is a great coach, um, great recruiter, great coach. And they had nine days to prepare for us. And that was a big concern of mine because um, when uh, she's she's got a better roster and she had time to prepare, um, and I knew she'd prepare them well. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time to prepare ourselves, and we're definitely in a stage where the focus is on us way more right now with so many new pieces um, than our opponents. So I was really pleased to see our team make some in-game adjustments, um, execute those really well. Um, I thought we found some like good puncture points to their defense, um, trying to you know play inside with Lucy and Bella, um, also looking at opportunities with Roxanne in that space and seeing if we could um, just be the aggressor and own that paint. Um, you know, no game is ever all good or all bad. Obviously, we could have done a better job on the rebounding, uh, but they were challenging us a lot, and uh, you know we we forced them into a lot of misses. We just were rotating too deep and putting ourselves in uh, disadvantaged positions on the boards. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to single out too many individual players because I really felt like this was just a total team collective effort. You know, Coach, second straight game with the same starting five, mm -hmm. but how much of these first few games has been figuring out rotations yeah. and, and that kind of thing? Well, we um, actually put Evie oh, in, right. so and I, I did it because I felt like we needed a little bit of a punch off the bench um, and some experience coming off the bench, um, and Roxanne provided that for us. Um, I also just, you know, right now, and nothing's ever permanent, but just watching her, she does a good job um, seeing things develop and then coming in and being ready to attack that um, and, and you know different people experience the games differently early and she likes to see and then go impact um, and I think you know uh, honestly I thought Evie, Evie has done some things lately and just trying to be aggressive and it's not necessarily in her scoring but it's the quality of her cutting it's the quality of her communication um, that we felt like was going to be a good uh, good opportunity for her. Um, so, but I, I do think we do have some steady pieces. Fish at that point guard spot. Um, she's just continuing to um, build a lot of trust with me, and with that, I will continue to empower her more in that space, um, just in what she's seeing and how she sees we can um, attack a team in holes. Um, and then obviously these two on my left and my uh, right are doing a lot of really good stuff as well. Um, they're showing up consistently the same type of player, and that allows me to depend on them in certain spaces, and uh, that's important in a starting group. Um, you had four girls in, in double digits mm -hmm. in this game. Just talk about that ability yeah. to move the ball, squirrel, but you said everyone's still trying, trying to get used to playing with yeah. each other, but just kind of what does that mean for you guys to come out of this game? Well, I think this is the third game where we've had a different leading scorer, I think. Did you lead us in scoring last time? Tom, yeah. Did you? With oh, 15. Okay. Well, I do think we have the potential to have a different leading scorer a lot. And it is a goal of ours that we have a, a dis distribution of that scoring. So, you know, really we were one point off right here to being able to have five in double figures. Um, and uh, but I, I I think that's evidence. We've worked a lot on our offense this past week. Um, you know, just really working in space and recognizing where to find those space, and also recognizing some puncture points um, to defenses. And I was really pleased and proud. It doesn't happen though if they don't work. Like Bella worked to get defenders on her back, and she communicated. She demanded the ball. Her teammates got her that ball. Um, Roxanne read opportunities with mismatches. She attacked a player with fouls. And so they, they brought a high IQ um, onto the court, which helped. Can you uh, talk about, uh, Emily, a little bit more? You talked about mm -hmm. finding those puncture points. She found them and then was able to draw fouls and was six for six from the free throw yeah. line tonight, which was huge for y'all. I think she's going to be a player for us that, like, her impact won't always show up in points. Um, It'll be like organizing us. She is a conductor 
for us out there. And it's on both ends of the floor. Um, and I think her teammates are getting used to playing around her on the defensive end of the floor. Bella made some really nice in-game adjustments in that space as well. And Fish listens as much as she communicates. So that's, those are just a couple of things that don't show up on a box score. But she has like this like toughness in her where her first instinct is to serve, distribute, John Stockton-esque type of way. But if she recognizes that a moment is needed, she needs a moment. And that's all you can ask from a point guard. You could really tell that in her play as the mm -hmm. uh, fourth quarter winded down. Uh, it seemed like she really had command of the court, yeah. bringing it up, uh, getting out of the uh, press, yeah. especially. Definitely. And I, I think we had uh, really good spacing in that. And we had a lot of multiple people that could have managed that. Um, Bella did a nice job in, uh, in KG stretching. 94 feet um, that press so yeah she's steady she's steady and I'm excited that you know it's only what game three with her and lots more growth that we'll get to see. You know, Bella for you looked like you brought a lot of energy especially down in the paint tonight like coach was talking about but do you have a sense of pride when it comes to getting a rebound because you had 12 tonight you were really aggressive on the boards. Um, I really do I like rebounding more than I like scoring because I feel like rebounding is mainly effort height helps um, but um, I feel like it brings so much more energy like when if my teammates can trust that like I'm gonna do what I have to do to get that board I feel like it helps us with our momentum like getting the first board on defense or getting an offensive board just brings energy both ways you had three blocks as well just is that similar thing just all about effort that one's new so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that was fun yeah <laughs> Tell me for you, four for eight from three tonight. You had, I think, seven of your last 16 threes. You're shooting about 50% from that range. Is that um, it, it's just feel, or are you on a hot streak right now? Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I would say in the beginning I was in a slump. I mean, I was like one for seven the first game, but my teammates just keep instilling confidence in me to keep shooting it and hitting me in the right spots. And then the coaching staff also just instills great confidence in me to just keep shooting. So getting to the gym early with our GAs just has been like helping me a lot. How much of that, too, is playing off of Emily, who's been talked about tonight? Oh, yeah. I mean, we get in the gym together, too, sometimes. I mean, we ride together everywhere. So if I'm here, she's there. And I mean, she's able to know where I'm going to be on the court. And then I'm able to know where she's going to hit me. So we just play off each other pretty well. Um, kind of going off that, like, Bella, do you feel like you guys' confidence grown up as you're playing more together as a team? You get to practice more and play together more. You guys feel like you're growing? I definitely think we are. I think. Um, we about half of the team is new this year to TCU, but I definitely feel like all the work that we put in in the summer with our um, on and off the court, like building our team culture and things like that, I think that it's really starting to show and we're kind of getting used to playing with each other on the court, but off the court, we just genuinely enjoy each other. Like it's just, it's not because we're teammates, like. Well, I guess kind of, <laughs> but um, we choose to hang out. With yeah, them. like we yeah. choose to hang out with each other. Off days, like we think that we'd need a break, but we're always together. So I feel like, yeah, I, building our team culture off the court has really come into play on the court, and it's helped us to kind of learn how to play with each other. Talk a little bit about that culture specifically. What are some What are some key points that coaches gotten across to the team about culture this off season? Um, the biggest thing would be a culture of one and one standing for only need everyone. Um, we've done a lot of different activities. We've brought in like speakers, um, a lot of challenging activities like mentally and physically and through each activity it's brought us closer together as a team. Um, but as far as only need everyone, it's exactly what it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, everybody on the bench, everybody on the court in practices, every single person like if one person has low energy, everybody else comes together to bring them up. It's not, and you can't really coach that. You can't really coach people to want to be there, and that's what's so great about this group, is everybody just wants to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Are you from Idaho? <laughs>